G'day, welcome to Pay It Forward. Today I have got a really colourful project. I say that, you know, one time I'm going to make something up all in neutral tones and absolutely shock all of you. Today is not that day. Again, a very colourful project and this is a beautiful little Kimmy doll which is a very simple Japanese design and I love the little stump dolls. They're some of my favourites. They are little dolls with huge characters so I hope you're going to love it too. It's a great pattern even for beginners so you'll find your free pattern in the description box below. You just need to click on that link. You'll be able to print out your free pattern templates. Do make sure to set your printer in the settings to be printing at actual size before you do that. That way all of your pattern pieces will be correct. Do make use of that uh, measuring bar that I have on all of your pattern templates as well. And remember that I always include all seam allowances within your pattern. So let's have some fun. Let's start by having a look at our materials and requirements here. So we need our main body pieces and I have two pieces, two different prints and they are both interfaced with a fusible woven medium weight interfacing. You do need to interface this project for strength. And I have chosen a light skin sort of tone, a neutral tone that's going to work in with the face. We're going to be covering that front panel, but the back panel, I want to reflect the back of the kimono. So we've got those two pieces and then to those, we're going to be adding our kimono crossover pieces and they are just cut from fabric with fusible webbing on the back and they're going to create that lovely crossover look there and I'm actually using two different prints and you'll see why I'm doing that in a moment so they will be ready to be pressed on and then we're going to need our base piece which is our two pieces of mat board. I've got picture framing mat board there that I've cut out and glued together. So I've got a nice solid base. That's our support base. And then we need a piece of either interfaced felt or double felt will be fine just to cover that base for a nice, very professional looking finish there. So we've got those and then we're going to need the arms. So the arms are actually going to be made as proper little arms and they are going to be covered in a nice little kimono sleeve. So you don't cut out the arms on this project. You can see there that I folded my fabric and I've used the same fabric as I am for the, the front. I folded that in half right sides together and I've actually drawn around my pattern template, flipped it over and done the reverse arm. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to stitch around that and cut those pieces out. It's just much easier to do that than to be trying to sew together two very fine little pieces. You'll find that really easy. So you need to have those all traced up and ready. And then we have our two sleeves that are gonna sit over those arms. And again, I've cut them from my two opposing fabrics. My reason for that is I'm going to put the two opposite pieces on the opposite sides so that it's kind of just reflecting that kimono all those different colors look so you can use all of the same fabric if you like for the front and the arms but I just like to mix it up a little so we've got those all ready to go you're also going to need your head pieces so let's have a look at those so we start off with our back head piece and that is felt, interfaced felt. It is interfaced. I just used a black woven fusible interfacing. So you probably can't see it, but it's there. So that's our back piece. Then we have a filler, which is stiffened felt. If you don't have stiffened felt, you can just use another piece of ordinary felt. We need something to fill that, um, that head so that it just gives it a little bit more volume there. And then we have our front head piece which is also just interfaced there. And these are all felt, they need to be felt. And then you have your face piece. Now the face piece is just felt with fusible uh, webbing applied so that we're gonna be able to press that one on and that one will fit in right there nicely and be pressed on. And then your top hair piece is also felt with fusible webbing applied and that one will sit straight over the top and it will all line up 
to create that little face. For the face details, I'm actually doing little sleepy, flirty sort of eyes and it's just a simple piece of felt. You've got your template there that will show you. I'm probably not getting this in the right position for you, but you'll get the idea. So we will have those and we'll be adding a couple of little lashes at the end. And I will also be stitching in a tiny little smile and I'm going to be adding a little rosebud heart in the middle. So we get that real little Cupid's bow sort of lip there. It's a really simple way. And these dolls are very, very, traditionally, they're very, very simple. If you don't want that sleepy sort of eye look, you can just use two quite small uh, black buttons and add a couple of lashes at the side of them. So that's entirely up to you. So also for the head, we're gonna need just a little adornment of something pretty at the end. I'm just gonna add a couple of little flowers there. Traditionally, they have a little bit of decoration on the top of their head. And what else are we going to need? We're going to need a button for joining that head to the body. So a nice, decent sized button there. Something that matches the back of your um, body print there. So we've got that one. And you're going to need some pearl thread for doing your finish finishing up blanket stitching around the top of that head. You'll need your extra strong threads in various colors. We're gonna be doing a little bit of blanket stitching on the baby. You'll need some clear craft glue, something suitable for fabric. You may want to use a snap fastener for um, pulling those two little hands together where she holds her little kitty. Um, alternatively, you can just throw a couple of stitches through if you like. We're going to be filling with polyester filling and our last uh, little pieces are our kitty. So our kitty that dangles over her arm. We've got our two head pieces there. There's two there and they are cut from felt with the interfacing, the same interfacing applied. We've got two of those. And then, because that one's gonna have a little bit of stuffing in it. And then you've got your body, your arms, and the little tail piece. They are all just cut from double felt. Double felt is just two pieces of felt fused together using a hot iron, um, fused together with fusible webbing. So you've got a really thick piece of felt and we don't need to add any filling to that. So we're going to be adding just some stitched features onto our little kitty's face. So that's about it, that's all we need. So what we're gonna start with today, move everything out of the way, and we're going to start with our arms so that they're all ready, because they're incorporated into the side seam. So as I said at the beginning there, you've traced around your templates, flipped it over, reversed it, so you've got your two opposite arms. And just take this one to the machine and using a very small machine stitch, definitely about a number two, even, even tinier if your machine will go smaller than that, leave this edge open and we're going to stitch exactly on that line. And the same with that one. And then I'll show you how we cut those pieces out. So now that that's stitched, we can go ahead and cut that one out and you cut directly on that top line. and keep a very small seam allowance so that that arm turns through really well. So it's probably only just about two millimeters, I'd say. And I did use a friction pen, a heat erasable marker to mark that arm shape there. So I will be able to just iron that and remove those marks nice and close to that seam without cutting into it. It's just a much easier way of sewing little tiny limbs, especially when you're using just fabric on its own with no interfacing. So that has our little arm. So what I'll do next is I will go ahead, I'm gonna take it to my iron and remove those marks first, but we can take that one Actually, I can do it afterwards, it will still work. So I take my forceps and put them right in, tuck the end and 
lock those forceps and just pull that one through very gently. And I will push that one out. Get those seams really pushed out for that lovely little hand shape. You can even give it a press if you like, which I will. And then you just need to go ahead and we're going to fill only the wrist and the hand section. The hand section pack it quite firm so that we'll end up with a little arm like this. We want all the rest of this section to be empty and nice and soft. Once you've got that filled, you can go ahead and just close that opening on the machine. That's the section that's going to be embedded in the seam. So I'm gonna get that second arm ready. Next, we want to go ahead and make the sleeves that we're going to slip over each of those arms. So if you have a look at your pattern pieces, you'll see that these are the seams that match up these. That's going to be embedded into the side and this one here also. So what we're going to be sewing here, first of all, is just the top seam. And we're gonna keep, keep it as small as you can. So I'm thinking about three millimeters to stitch just this top curve here and just this top curve here. And then we'll need to press that seam open and flat, particularly at this end. This is the end where the hand pokes out. So just get both of those two top seams stitched and then we'll go from there. So now I've taken those stitched arms and I've pressed out the lower edge. So the edge that's going to be where our little hand pokes out. Remember that this is the shoulder. I've taken that and I've pressed that seam open and flat. And then I folded the end over just to create a tiny little hem across that sleeve line. And then we just need to top stitch across there. I've already done it on this one. So you can see there I've top stitched across. The reason for that is then when we fold that over, when that little hand pops out, this is all neat and tidy here. So our next step is to put right sides together again, line everything up, particularly at the sleeve line here, and just stitch the lower seams in the same way. So I've gone ahead and turned those sleeves through and given it a nice press. And now all we need to do is tuck each of those arms into that sleeve, keeping it all lined up. You can reach in there with our forceps and pull that little hand through. And you just want to pull it through until it lines up with your other end. And it will line up beautifully. It will just tuck in there nicely. Once you've got that all nicely lined up, you just stitch across on the machine again, just to close those ends, just like I have on this one. So then you've got your two arms all ready with their little kimono sleeves. So we can put those aside. So our next step is we're going to start work on our body front. So we take our body front and we're going to take our pieces and get those pressed on. So our kimono pieces remove that backing paper which is the fusible webbing and we're just going to add those oops, line them up with the edge there you'll see exactly where they go we're going to get those pressed into place. If you're using two colours like I am, remember to choose which one goes over in front of the other one. So entirely up to you. And we'll get those pressed into place. Now, once they're pressed into place, we just need to stitch those two edges there. Now you can do that. You could do that by hand with a blanket applique stitch, or you could do what I'm going to do. And I'm just going to do a nice close zigzag on the machine and applique those into place. So once you have those pieces, your kimono pieces stitched into place, you can see there I've added each of those arms 
fold it over in front there and see how I've alternated those colours and I've just stitched them into place just inside the seam allowance starting from the marks that you've got on your pattern template that tell you exactly where those arms need to be so they're nicely all ready arms for hugging and now we're going to just add our front uh, and put our front and back pieces together you can use pins or clips whatever you like to pin clip all the way around line up both of those edges at the base and then you just need to sew a seam allowance which is about four millimeters make sure you back and forth on the start travel all the way around and back and forth at the base there before turning it through I have now turned that one through and rolled out all of those seams and now we're ready to fill that body so I'm just going to use my forceps and fill out that top section we need that top section filled out just as well as the base because that's the support for our adding our head and I'm just going to continue to fill that one and I'm going to pack it really nice and firm I did sew that body seam two times I don't know if I mentioned that but I always do just so that uh, it's all nice and strong and we're not going to burst a seam when we're packing that nice and firm so I'm going to continue on filling till I get just about just about a centimeter away from the edge here and then I will use my wool felting needle if you've got one go ahead and use that and it will help you pack those fibers in and stop all those that stuffing from coming back out at you so we get a nice firm flat base once you have that body all packed out nice and firm you can go ahead and sew a doubled strand of extra strong thread sew a running stitch all the way around the base and it's just about a half a centimeter in from the bottom and I've left the tail ends hanging because I want to tie those off so I've just tied my first knot there and you can see I've gone in with my wool felting needle there and I've got a lovely flat surface there for the base just tapped away there until that's where I want it to be and now we can add our base disc just going to slot that one in there pull that fabric up around it and then I can pull in those thread ends just making sure you've got that all centered and you want to pull that in it doesn't have to meet in the middle of course it just needs to pull in enough that when we add that felt disc over the top everything will be nicely covered so I'm going to knot that one off about four times and, and snip those thread ends so there you can go you can see that has our little doll's body just about done pulled into place stands up very nicely on its own there I've just got those arms pinned into place just temporarily for now but you can see such a lovely result okay so our next step is to glue our base piece of felt onto our base I've got that coated nicely with my clear craft glue there you can see I'm just going to drop that over the top there press that into place make sure all of those edges are sealed and we can leave that one to dry we need it to be absolutely dry before we do our blanket applique stitching so my glue is dry now and I'm ready to sew my blanket applique stitch around the base there and you can see that I've got a single strand of pearl thread I'm going to go with the contrasting green and also it is an eight ply which I prefer to work with and now I've got a knot in the end of my thread and I've just gone in between those layers and just come out right on the edge there so I'm going to hold that thread up out of the way and I'm going to take my first stitch now blanket applique is going through all of your layers and coming out on the edge of your shape whatever that shape might be usually it's done in 2d this time we're doing it in 3d bringing my needle out through the body section right on the edge there and bringing my needle through the loop there take my next stitch keeping them to be around about four to five millimeters coming out again on that body section through the loop 
and pulling that one in. What that's doing is it's binding those two edges together and it's also giving it a really nice decorative finish there. If you haven't sewn a blanket applique stitch before, I'll put the link up the top for you there where I've got a video that shows you how to sew it on just sewing around a regular shape but it gives you an idea but you can see it's pretty straightforward it's just about rotating your work as you go so that those stitches are fanning out nice and evenly and keep your stitches all the same so you can see that's creating a lovely little binding edge there a lovely little detailed effect especially if you're selling your work it's nice to have that professional finish so I'm going to stitch that one into place so there we go that has my completed little body and we can put that one aside and now we get to start work on our little face piece so we start with our front head piece which is interfaced and we've got our face section which has our fusible webbing on and we're just going to line that one up make sure that you've got that absolutely covering that black there and we get that one pressed into place with a hot iron and protective cloth and then I'm going to stitch around just from this edge here I'm going to leave this lower edge because we're going to sew that with a blanket stitch at the end but I'm going to stitch this one into place with that same machine applique stitch that close zigzag and I'm going to use a matching thread so I want it all to be as clean and as neat as possible all the way around so our next step is to add our eyes now remember I said that if you wanted to add just black buttons you can go ahead and do that and add a couple of lashes there I've given you templates for the little sleepy eyes and they have fusible webbing on them I know they're little tiny pieces but you'll find they're quite easy to cut out because they've got that backing paper on them the narrower side is in the center and the thicker end is at the side now you'll see on your pattern template that there I've given you three little marks that's going to help you with placement so there's your placement for the center of your mouth and here's the placement for the corners of your little sleepy eyes so you can put them on a nice little tilt arrange them nicely and take your ruler and make sure that everything is lined up another good thing to do is to drop that hair, pos hair into position so you can get a good idea of where everything is sitting and once you feel like everything is right get those pressed into place with a hot iron and a protective cloth um, and the marks that I've popped there I've used a heat erasable marker so they won't be seen so it's just a good way to help you line that up so once I've got those pressed into place I'm simply going to sew on my machine with black straight through the center there to set all those in place and then I'm just going to add a couple of hand stitches for a couple of extra lashes off the top there so there you can see I've got those eyes in place and then I've gone ahead and drawn in my little smile there that will sit underneath that little heart button that I'm going to add you can use anything there just the bottom of a cotton reel will work just make sure you use your template to give you the exact spot for that one and you can see that I'm just going to embroider over that line coming in from behind I'm actually using an extra strong thread but it is an embroidery thread this one and it's just enough to cover over that line which I have made again with my heat erasable pen and you can see I'm just sewing just a standard back stitch so that it's all nicely linked to cover that whole little smile and so now my next step is to fuse my top hair section in place and of course I'm using black here but these little Kimmy dolls they come in so many different colors you can definitely use the brights for the hair for something really different for a really funky little look so you can see there I'm just going to get that one all fused into place and then I'm going to use the same close applique machine stitch to stitch just along these lines here that frame the face 
because then we're going to be sewing all the way around with a blanket stitch. So I'm going to get that one pressed and stitched into place. And that completes my front of my face. You can see I've added that button there and I've stitched on my two flowers. You can also do that last if you want, but because they're sewn on and they're not really gonna interfere with the edge here, I was happy to put them on now. So now the next step is to join the front head piece to the back head piece. So what I've done is I've glued that filler to the wrong side of the back of the head and then I've coated this all quite liberally with my glue ready for me to add my front. So I'm going to line that up and get that one into place. Do check it all the way around. Have a look at it from every angle and see all those edges together. You can add a couple of little clips if you want while it's drying. And we leave that one to dry completely for at least 20 minutes before we're going to do our final stitching. So now I'm ready to do my final blanket stitch around this face and I'm using my black pearl thread and I'm using an eight ply and I've got a single strand with a knot in the end. I've just come in from behind and I've come out between those two layers. Now the section that I'm going to blanket stitch is from the side of the chin all the way around the top of the head back to the other side of the chin and then I will change my thread colour just to sew that lower chin. So blanket stitch is simply going through all of your layers with your needle and bringing your needle out through the loop. And I do have a video that shows you how to sew the blanket stitch. Very up close and easy to see. I'll put that link up the top there for you. It's just a matter of keeping your stitches nice and even. It's a bit hard for you to see on the black, but I do need it to be black. I'm just going through all of the layers each time and you can see my needle coming out through that loop and that's going to create that binding stitch very similar to what we did around the base of the body. Bringing that needle through the loop each time and it will give me a binding that will close those edges and give a nice decorative stitch even though we're using black and of course you can contrast but generally these dolls look best if everything is kept very very simple and so if you blend your color to your hair color it will look better so I'm going to get that entire head shape stitched into place. And there we have that completed little face ready to add on to our body. So what we're going to do here, we're going to need our button because that's how we're going to be joining it on. And it can be tricky to show you how to do this. So I'm gonna try and give you an idea. Basically what we're going to be doing is taking a, a doll needle. I've got my medium sized doll needle here and I've got two strands of extra strong thread pass through that needle so that I've got four strands. What we're going to be doing is going in through the button, right through that section of the top of the body, we're going to take a stitch through the back of that head, then we're going to travel back through and back out the other button, so that the other side of the button. So this is going to be fixed, the little face is going to be fixed on by pulling those ends in and tying them up. So it, I'm going to get that threaded up and through so that you can see how that looks. Now you want to get your position right first of all so you want to be able to estimate where that little face will sit. Don't have it sitting up too high. We don't want to see too much neck. They are quite a squat little doll. So you can see there where I've got that one sitting and it might help you to make a mark on the back of your headpiece there. And when, when we travel through that button and through here, that button is going to sit just about a centimetre and a half from the top there. So that, that gives it enough room to pull in and sit nicely. Make sure that you travel your needle through straight. Don't go in at an angle. So you want to be travelling straight. And when you come through to take your stitch through the back of the head there, 
you want to take only that back layer. So you don't want to be digging in through the front here. So just the back layer, which is our piece of interfaced felt, will give you enough of a hold. So I'm going to stitch it through and then show you how that all looks. So there I have the head attached and I'm going to show you how that looks there. So you can see that I've taken my needle in first through one of the holes in the button, through that back section. I've come out at the front of the neck there and taken a stitch across, travelled back, gone back into that body and come out the other side and back through that button again. So you can see we've got that head connected there like that. So now I can pull that all in and I can check my head position. I want to make sure that's exactly where I want it to be. Check that I've got some nice movement there to give her a bit of expression. And then all you need to do is compress all those layers and knot that one off at least four times. Keep up that pressure. You still want that face to sit nice and flat. You don't want it to be pulling in in the center. Um, but you want it to be nice and secure. So when you're happy with that position, like I said, compress all those layers and knot that off at least four times. So there we go, all tied off and snipped those thread ends, got that face beautifully in place. And now those little arms are waiting for her kitty. So let's get busy making that little kitty for her. So we'll start with the front of our kitty's face. So I've taken one of those face pieces and you can see that I have pressed on those tiny little ear pieces that I gave you. They are pressed on and I've just stitched on the machine just a few stitches just to hold those in place. And my second step is to go ahead and I've just stitched an inverted cross there for the nose and mouth. Just make it wider at the base and smaller at the top and you get that impression of that little nose. And you can also go, and ha go ahead and add some whiskers at this stage if you like. I don't normally do that, but in this case, I probably will. So I know, big surprise for me, um, but I can keep it all nice and tidy this way. So I'm just going to draw in just a couple of whiskers on each side and I'm going to do the same thing and just make my stitches by hand. So there you can see whiskers in place and I've just added a tiny bit of colour to the tip of that nose. You can do that with just a normal polychromo pencil if you like or perhaps a pastels, artist pastels or even a marker. I actually have a permanent fabric marker here that I've used and just put a drop of colour there. So now we're going to sew the lower section of this kitty's head together and I'm doing that with my extra strong thread and I have a single strand and we're just going to be sewing a blanket stitch, a tiny blanket stitch. So I've got a knot in the end and I've come out between those two layers. I'm going to start right at the base of that ear. Bring that one through. So it's the same blanket stitch that we did before, only it's just very, very small. So just make your way around that whole lower edge to the base of the ear and then leave your thread and needle on. And now I'm just going to add a tiny little bit of filling using my very small forceps to the lower part of that head just to give it just a little bit of volume. It's really just a tiny bit. just to plump it out a tiny bit because we're going to be adding those little sleepy eyes and they will look better if we have some stuffing there to sink those little stitches into and pull them in a little. So you can see I'm just tucking that in, filling out that lower part of the head, just that little bit. You can use your wool felting needle here too to keep that down. Tuck that into place. Once you've got just enough there, you can go ahead and just glue 
the backs of those ears and seal those little ear tips together and just let those dry for about 10 minutes and then go ahead and close the rest of that opening. I'm going to be adding my two little sleepy eyes with pearl thread and I'm using an eight ply a single strand and I am going to use black so that it's really going to show up you can see that I've just added two tiny little marks there to show me where I want the start of my sleepy eyes to be and I will just drop a stitch just on a slight slant um, heading downwards so come in at the back of the head I've got a knot in the end and I'm going to come out exactly on my little mark there. And then I'm just going to take that stitch across. Remember that it will become smaller as it sinks into the head. Come out again, the back of the head, and I can pull that stitch in. You can see how I've got some tension there and that little stitch is pulled in. Now while that tension, keep that tension up and take a little stay stitch at the back there so that that stitch holds and it stays pulled in. Then move across and do exactly the same with the other eye. So that has my kitty head all complete and now we can move on to the body. Now your body pieces are really simple because all you need to do is just sew that little blanket stitch that we just used on the head right the way around your pattern pieces all three of those so the arm section the tail and the body I start at the top and I hide that knot at the front where everything will be covered because we're going to pop this little one together like that as you can see it's a simple matter of throwing a couple of stitches in behind to attach that tail and we're going to add the head in exactly the same way as we did with the doll where we're going to go through all of those layers starting from the back only this time we're not using a button I guess you could use a little button I don't feel it's necessary I just go straight through just as we did before going through the the arm section take that stitch through the back of the head travel back through and then tie that one up do make sure that you've got little kitty's head sitting low enough that he's got a nice little shoulder shrug there so I'm going to get those pieces all into place add my little tail and we will be done there we go a lovely little sleepy droopy little kitty let's put a kitty in little dolly mama's arms and that completes our beautiful little Kimmy doll happy there with her little kitty now another great idea for this top um, adornment on the top of her head uh, fabric yo-yos or felt yo-yos with buttons and embellishments work really well there um, and this pattern just really lends itself to all sorts of little tassels and trinkets and jewels and of course change up all the colors and it's just the most incredible gift it's just a really happy little product and if you've enjoyed making this one um, I've got so many of these little dolls let's let's round up the usual suspects there we go that's just a handful of the other characters I have check out my playlist and uh, you'll see all of the free patterns and tutorials for all of those so many ways to change these up they are little dolls with great big characters and I absolutely love them I hope you love them too so thank you all for watching today I hope you had some fun if you did enjoy this video you can uh, give me a thumbs up that would be absolutely beaut um, I get asked all the time uh, Lisa can I make your patterns up and sell the product and yes you can I really encourage you all to do that in fact um, I'm pretty sure that a lot of you have online stores and uh, perhaps sell at fates um, and this is a these patterns really uh, work really well for that sort of product um, definitely put your own stamp on it make some really original things and uh, I think you'll do really well wish you absolutely every success with that um, and speaking of sharing, I love to share 
and join in on everything that you're doing and making with my patterns so why not come and join our facebook page it's a great group you can share pictures of your creations that you've made with my patterns and we can all be encouraging and we all get encouraged as well i jump on there when whenever i can and see what everybody is up to a big shout out to the beautiful allison who keeps it all running smoothly for us all thank you allison and uh, thank you everybody who's a member there and everybody who joins us and follows us so come and subscribe if you haven't subscribed to pay it forward come and do it you're missing out on all the fun and all of the patterns for sure so so much more to come busy working behind the scenes on your masterclass working on several projects at once so i'm like a chook with its head cut off at the moment so um but it's all good fun so keep keep watching me on instagram keep checking instagram for those updates and i will definitely keep keep you all informed so stay creative everyone this week have a fabulous week stay safe keep paying all those good things forward and until next time it's huru from me